Welcome to Untangle, where we untangle Christianity from theology, religion, and colonization. Today, we're looking at the idea of what does Waka Fana, an ancient African religion, have to do with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And to answer that question, we started with another one. Who did Abraham think called him? In Genesis chapter 12, Abraham is called and he responds immediately to God. But we actually don't learn the name of God until generations later with Moses. So who did Abraham think called him? To answer that question, we would know that Abraham's view of God would be informed by the culture he was living in. And what culture do we find him living in? Well, in Genesis chapter 11, we see him living in Ur of the Chaldees. And if you search Ur of the Chaldees and do any kind of research on it, you know that it was a part of Mesopotamia that was inhabited by the Sumerians. And so the understanding that Abraham had of God would be informed by the Sumerians who were living in Ur of the Chaldees. What do we know about those Sumerians? Well, we know that the term Sumerian means black-headed people. So the Sumerians were a black-headed people, and we know that they were an advanced civilization that used a language called cuneiform. It was akin to hieroglyphics. People couldn't figure out how to read it until a guy named Sir Henry Rawlinson actually learned to interpret it. And he learned to interpret it by going down into Ethiopia and Sudan, and that's where he found the lexicon that actually allowed him to interpret it. He determined that that language, cuneiform, was actually a derivative of the languages of the people in Sudan and Ethiopia. So then we have to ask the question, which people? Well, he found it among a group of people called the Oromo people. And the Oromo people are one of the most ancient civilizations in the Sudan and Ethiopia, and they have a very distinct way of thinking about God. They call it Waka Fana. In their religion, there is one God, Waka, who uses Ayana to create manifestations of itself. The Ayana becomes that which it creates. That's the understanding that Abraham would have had about God when he was called. And that's the one he would have talked to Isaac and that he would have talked to Jacob. And so then we have to ask, what does that mean for our Christianity if we see it through that lens? And here's what I think is even funner. Let's talk about how we can look at Waka Fana and the impact on our understanding of the Trinity. But that's another video.